so data states. This is a pretty important topic because if we understand what is uh, behind the data states and how is the SDK handling those states, we can start understanding how the SDK works and how is the, the workflow really with the SDK. So uh, the data states are a, a, a property of the data object that is just read only state. So the SDK will fully maintain this property. And there are like a bunch of uh, these states and we use it for synchronization. So for example, we have the sync to post, update, uploading, etc. I'm gonna be all of them. I'm gonna see all of them. So first of all, uh, we have the sync state. Uh, that is when the element is sync uh, with the server. And there are no local changes for this value. So you didn't change it at all, and you probably just download the the data. Uh, the state to post is when you have created this element locally. So there is there there no it not uh, exist in the not exist in the server and it has haven't been uh, uploaded that far. And the to update state is when you have uh, some data that you have modified in your device, uh, but it exists in the server. So you have to update it. So now we're gonna see uh, the flow more or less. When you download the data directly from the server, the currently state is sync. But when you create this data on the device, then you have to pause. Then when you ch uh, make changes in, in the device, it uh, goes to, to update. Uh, so now uh, when you try to upload the data, the state is gonna change and it's gonna be uploading. If it's modified before receiving any server response, uh, the state is going to go back to update. So for example, you upload, uh, try to upload the data, but it keeps uploading. You didn't reach the server because maybe you have some connection issues with the network. And then uh, you make some changes uh, of this property in the device. It's gonna turn to update again. So you have to uh, upload the data again. But if you have a, a server response, you can have some error or some successful sync. If you have a, a successful sync, it is gonna change to sync. But you have some error, maybe you have an error or a warning, so it's gonna change the state. When you have an error uh, from the server, it changes uh, just to the error state and the warning when you receive this warning. When you have those states and you make changes on the property, the, the state is gonna change again to, to update. So you can uh, come back here and upload the data again. Uh, okay, we also have another state, uh, which is relationship state, which uh, the SDK, uh, only use this uh, state for fulfilling a relationship to another TI event or enroll. And this only contains uh, like basic information of this uh, relationship, like for example, uh, main properties like the code, the name, display name, last updated, but it has nothing like enrollments, events or other relationships and also it cannot be modified. So it's just data that uh, is there for fulfilling the relationship, nothing less, nothing more. And uh, 
Now we are going to talk a bit about SMS synchronization. Uh, later we have seen this part, but here instead of going to uploading, uh, the state is changed to send via SMS. When you change, when you try to send the all the data by SMS. So when you make some changes, it, go, it goes uh, again to, to update. But if you have uh, a response for the server, then uh, you can have a successful SMS, which it is going to go to sync via SMS state. And if you make some changes, it's going to go again to, to update state. Also, you can receive an SMS with an error, and then it's going to go to error or warning. So if you compare this slide with the one we had before, we have added this sync via SMS state, and we have changed the uploading state for the send via SMS. If you don't have any, any, any server that, so if you don't have a server that responds uh, with SMS, you only have, are going to have this first, uh, like this um, flow. Um, in the skeleton app, uh, we are just having these uh, three icons. This icon uh, means that you have all your data sync. This orange icon means that you have this data to post or to update or to delete. And this one um, is saying you that you have an error or a warning in your state. If you are going to create a, your own your, your application, it's better than you have each of these uh, uh, states uh, linked by different icons. And that's it for data states. Uh, do you have any questions about this? So now we're going to talk a bit about data set instances. Data set instances is the name that we have for those uh, combinations in the SDK of data set period or unit and attribute option combo. So it's like a handy representation of existing data in the aggregated world. Uh, this representation is uh, so does not exist in the HS2. It's just a thing that we have in the SDK, and it uh, is also not persisted in the database. But is used directly uh, for data approvals and use it in the dataset complete registrations. And it also includes some other information like uh, the sync state, the value count, and the display name for some properties. So dataset instance is an object uh, with uh, like this, it's like, it has a data set UID, display name, the period, period type, the org unit, the org unit display name, also the attribute option combo UID, the display name of the combo, and the count of, so the value of the, of the count. Also, uh, you can see some examples here of uh, the data set instances. So here we have a theory question. <laughs> so we have this data and metadata, okay? And we have two data sets. The data set A, uh, we have a data, ele ML uh, data element one and the data element two, and the data set B with a data element two and the data element three. Both of them are the period type is monthly. And here we have the data element table. Uh, the, the data element one has this period. Uh, the data element two has another period. And the data element three has the same period as the data element two. 
and the data element one and data element two has the org unit one and the data element three has the org unit two. They have the same attribute option combo and those are the values. So the question is, how many data set instances we will have? And I remember that a data set instance is a combination of a data set, a period, an org unit, and an attribute option combo. So I'm gonna give you like one minute to think about it. And then I'm gonna ask you again. So start thinking. <laughs> Okay, uh, some of you want to answer uh, my question? It's not the same yeah. if we fail. <laughs> uh, four, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. Are you, that you? Yeah, I think maybe four. Okay, do we have any other answer? I can't be sure, but I think it's two. Okay. Do you want to answer, Yosef? I think it's four. Four, okay. Nabila? If it is data set period for unit and attribute option combo, then it should be 12. So be four, you say? 12. 12. 12. Okay. Julian? I think uh, four. Okay. So the right answer is four. I'm going to tell you why. So we're trying to to make combinations of those uh, four uh, things. <laughs> we know that attribute option combo is always the same, so we don't have to take it into account. And we have to see for those three that the set period on or unit, how many combinations do we have? Okay, so we start with the data set. Data set A have two elements. So we have to take into account this combination. For this data element, we have uh, the same org unit. Okay, so we don't have any. Uh, we don't have to take the org unit into account, but we have two different periods. So we have for data set A, two different periods. It means that there are two combinations. So we have data set A, the first period, data set A, the second period, and the same org units and the default attribute option combo. For the same reason, the data set B has these two data elements. So we see that we have the same period. So we don't have to, to take into account uh, this period. The attribute option combo is the same as the default, but we have two different org units. So it, that means that we have two different uh, data set instance for the data set B. They share the same period, but they have two different org units. 
Do you have any question about my explanation? Okay. Uh, question, maybe what will happen if uh, we haven't uh, a default uh, the attribute option combo? If, you, you mean, I, I don't think I, I get the question, but do you mean that yeah. if we have some other attribute com, uh, option combo here? Yes, we put two or three options. Okay. If, for example, uh, this default was another uh, attribute option combo, for example, we have default, default, but the first one is uh, attribute combo one. Then uh, the data set A will have uh, here two different attribute combos and here two different uh, periods. So when we uh, try to uh, uh, see the different, uh, the different, sorry, uh, that is instances that we have, we have to take into account these two. I think uh, that we are gonna have the same result uh, because this, this uh, data element will have always the same attribute option combo. So on this period, so we are going to have the data set A with a different uh, attribute option combo and uh, the data set A with uh, another attribute option combo, but it's going to be the same combination, I would say. Okay. Is that Thank right, you. Victor? Are you... <laughs> I think it is, yes. but... <laughs> yes, I think so. In this particular case, yes, I think so. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If we had, uh, like, uh, more combinations here and more data elements, it, it could be, like, a lot more tricky and have these combinations uh, could be uh, more difficult. But for this, we have a method in the SDK that... Uh, wait, sorry that help you with this data set instances. In fact, you have a whole uh, repository for data set instances when you can just ask for these combinations and you can uh, just print it in your screen. So now we have an exercise that you have to, to, to resolve. 